Hi everyone, once again, happy Mother's Day to all moms who are watching right now. It's nice to be back in this live streaming and share God's word once again. And I thank God for giving me this opportunity. Today, we are on our 56th day of community quarantine in the national level and more than 30 days here in our local community. Adapting to this new normal is not easy, and I know most of us are still coping with the current condition in our society. As we can see in our social media, people have various ways of dealing with this situation. Some people are taking advantage of this quarantine period by spending more valuable time with their loved ones, probably by watching a series on Netflix or by playing indoor games. Some are learning new hobbies and skills such as cooking, vlogging, photography, and many more, while others are joining webinars, online classes, and conferences. Well, people are doing all sorts of things just to get by. How about you? What have you been doing in the past few weeks? Now, on the contrary, there are those people who are presently struggling due to the economic crisis we are facing. And because of that, some companies were forced to lay off several or more of their workers, which has put a lot of people in a very difficult situation. That's why people are currently looking for a new means of income so they can provide for their families. And in the same way, there are also people who at this very moment are experiencing mental stress and emotional distress because of isolation, frustration, and even depression. But I want to keep on encouraging you that these two shall pass. Though we are in a very tough season, we can survive through the grace of God that is at work in our life and through his enabling power that is present and available for all of us. So that in the middle of this crisis, we will be able to stand in the position wherein Christ is our hope, therefore we will not lose heart. So let us allow this time for us to grow in our true identity and unleash our God-given potentials as we live in our true purpose. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the gift of life, that even in this darkest time, you gave us light and hope so that at the end of each day, we can say that this life is good because you are good. We believe that these things happen for a reason, and so in you we put our trust. And for all the moms who are watching right now, I pray that you bless them with new strength and courage and with wisdom and favor as they demonstrate your love and grace to their children and their husband. Lord, bless this time as we study your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Last week, we learned that God's vision for his church is a church who serves and shows Christ. It is fascinating that God's heart is being disclosed through us who are part of the kingdom of God, isn't it? Therefore, it is a privilege for us to serve intentionally, intimately, and incarnationally. So tonight, journey with me as we dig deeper into God's vision for his church as a church living out the royal identity in Christ. Okay, I will give you 10 seconds to grab your Bible and to open it in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 to 10, and we will allow the Holy Spirit to teach us what it means and why we need to live out our royal identity in Christ. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 to 10, in the New Living Translation, it says, But you are not like that, for you are a chosen people. You are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out, out 
of the darkness into his wonderful light. Once you had no identity as a people, now you are God's people. Once you received no mercy, now you have received God's mercy. Grace Valentin says, We are kingdom people destined to live in righteousness, peace, and joy. So why do we need to live out our royal identity in Christ? Let me give you two reasons based on the scripture we just read. First reason, we received a new identity in Christ. The day when we put our allegiance to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and accepted Him as our King, Savior, Redeemer, and Lord, a great shift happened in our life. And because of that, we become conscious of our sins and our bad habits. And it also compelled us to value our relationships since we have become aware of God's love for us even when we don't deserve it. And now, however, because of this crisis that we are currently facing, our identity is being shaken. This crisis is testing how deep our understanding is of who we are as followers of Jesus while we are living here on earth. So for that reason, our reactions to this crisis shows who we are and whose we are. Now, what does it mean for us as the church? Verse 9 reminds us of three important descriptions of our identity as people who are part of the community of faith. First, we are a chosen people. What comes into your mind when you hear the word chosen? Perhaps some of you will say, it is a great privilege. On the other hand, some may say it is biased. Some may also relate it to luck. However, the word chosen here means carrying a great privilege to accomplish a task. Just like how the nation of Israel is a chosen nation, as written in the Bible, their role is to proclaim the glory, the goodness, and the grace of God to other nations. However, they have missed the beauty of this privilege that they have. So now, God is giving us the privilege to partner with Him to accomplish His work. Basically, the church, which is us, is God's tool in accomplishing His plan and purpose on earth. Now, second, we are royal priests. The role of the priests in the Old Testament is to bring people to God as they mediate for their situation. As people who are now in Christ, who is the only mediator before God and man, we are given the responsibility to bring people to Christ. And how are we going to do that? We can do that through praying for people, for, through sharing God's hope to the world, through teaching the gospel to those who have not heard of it yet, and discipling them to understand the Father's love and the righteous rulership of Christ, and to, and to partner with the leadership of the Holy Spirit as He do His work in the lives of people. Therefore, we should create an opportunity to bring people to Christ. And especially now that we have this crisis, what we can do is to point people to Jesus. We can do great things even in this current situation. In fact, we can go beyond this crisis. Amen? Third, we are a holy nation. The word nation here means a group of people. It is not referring to a political community, but a community 
united in purpose, values, and culture. Therefore, as people who are under the leadership of Jesus, we are the people who live under the purpose, values, and the culture of the kingdom of God. Another thing, we are called holy. When we started a relationship with Jesus, we received positional holiness. In other words, we become holy in the eyes of God because of Jesus who is holy. As a result, since we have positional holiness because of our relationship with Jesus, we should live in practical holiness. It means that the way we do life should reflect the holiness of God. Basically, we have become agents of righteousness. That's why we need to continue to demonstrate it within the culture of grace. This is the reason why we have become aware and conscious of sin, and the Holy Spirit is continuously convicting our hearts. But not only does He convict our hearts, the Holy Spirit also aids us in how we live a holy life. Now, as followers of Jesus, we should make the kingdom of God visible to all people. So remember, we are chosen, we are royal priests, and we are a holy nation. Now, the second reason why we need to live out our royal identity in Christ is because we have become God's own possession. In verses 9 to 10, it says, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for He called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. Once you had no identity as a people, now you are God's people. Once you received no mercy, now you have received God's mercy. Amen? This text here highlights the rulership of God over our life. It puts emphasis on giving importance to whose we are. Therefore, it stresses the reference to where we belong. When we started to put our faith and allegiance to the finished work of Jesus, it has activated the redemptive power of Christ in us who believe in Him and have a relationship with Him. He redeemed us from the penalty and power of sin so that we can experience the reconciling presence of God in our life. And since we are God's own possession, it gives us an idea that we are connected to the Father, thereby bringing His character in this world. Now, if we are God's possession, then we need to portray God's will and ways. Hence, this gives us three important concepts on what we need to do as people who are owned by or connected to God. First is, we show God's goodness. Practically, as people who are experiencing God's goodness every day, we can demonstrate and we must demonstrate the goodness of God to other people. This gives us an opportunity to serve others in any way so we can show the goodness of God in their lives. In other words, because we are owned by God, we can do great things. Amen? That's right. We can do greater things even in this time of crisis. So you must tell yourself, I can do good things and yes, I can start it now. Praise God. William Tyndale said before he died, God's goodness is the root of all goodness, and our goodness, if we have any, springs out of His goodness. So second, 
we live in God's light. Now, in the past, we were people who were blinded to sin. Thus, we intentionally hurt others. But since we have placed our allegiance and faith to the finished work of Jesus, it has resulted to true enlightenment. Therefore, we experience God's light. Now, let me ask you. Have you experienced a sudden blackout in the middle of the night Then you felt the urge to go to the comfort room? Now, what was the first thing that you did? Well, you probably looked for a flash flashlight, right? Because you need something to light your way so that you can see clearly. Why? Because it's dark. In the same way, during this dark time that we experience, remember that we have the light and with that, we can lighten up others. It says in the scripture, Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. Likewise, one of the works of the Holy Spirit is to enlighten us. And since the Holy Spirit is residing in our hearts, we can experience His enlightenment and we can also be used by the Lord to enlighten others because He is with us. Now tell yourself, I can lighten up others through the true light that is in me. A paraphrase of Luke chapter 1 verse 79 says, God's light reveals what His love can heal. May this become a reality to many people, especially during this dire time, in Jesus' name. Now third, we experience God's mercy. In this time of pandemic wherein many of us are struggling and some are in deep pain, let us remember this. God's mercy and grace is available for us. Experiencing His mercy starts when we become aware of God's presence that is at work in our life. Joyce Mayer exclaimed, God's mercy is fresh and new every morning. Therefore, we have hope and strength to face each day. Amen? You know, we may experience pain or feel injustices around us, but this is also the time when we can demonstrate God's mercy and point people towards the mercy of God. So say to yourself, every day I live under God's mercy and I can show it as well. Now, Rick Warren, a well-known author and pastor, said this, God's mercy to us is the motivation for showing mercy to others. Remember, you will never be asked to forgive someone else more than God has forgiven you. So again, the three important concepts we must remember as people who are God's own possession our first, we show God's goodness. Second, we live in God's light. And third, we experience God's mercy. In conclusion, God's vision for us as a church is for us to start living out our royal identity in Christ. Yes, we have a new identity in Christ, which we experience every single day. We can come to the throne of grace anytime and anywhere. We can experience His grace and His strength so we can have hope as we face each day. Let us not forget the one who owns us. We are God's possession, and because of that, we can experience His goodness, His light, and His mercy. 
Well, I do not know what your current situation is right now, but I just want you to understand that God's goodness is available for you and for me. He's always willing to light your ways, your mind, and your heart. His mercy is always there to uphold you even in your most painful experiences. So if you are struggling right now and you know you need Jesus in your life, I would like to ask you to join me in this prayer and make it your own. Jesus is inviting you to come to Him and experience His grace. Let us pray. Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I cannot please God by my own works alone. I need your redemptive power over my life. And I ask you to be my King, my Savior, and my Lord. Lead me to your purpose so that I can live this life with hope. I thank you for the gift of life, and I receive it today. In Christ's name, Amen. If you pray that prayer, please give us a message, and we would like to connect to you. We would like to help you in your new identity in Christ and in your new found faith. Finally, maybe some of you who are joining us right now are in need of breakthroughs in your life. It could be in the area of finances or in your relationships, maybe your work, your studies, or life in general. I would like to pray for you as well. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us a royal identity in Christ. Thank you for redeeming us and for giving us new hope. During this difficult time, I pray that you allow us to see that ray of hope so we can have the strength and courage to face our battles. For those who are suffering right now, I pray for your sustaining grace to lift them up from their circumstance. For those who are in great need, I speak provision over their lives. May your divine providence be upon them. For those who are mentally and emotionally struggling, I speak life over them. May your comfort, your love, and joy embrace them during these dark moments. For those who are weak and sick, I declare healing through the mighty name of Jesus. We believe you are our great healer. Strengthen those who are weak. Empower those who are powerless. Holy Spirit, continue to guide us in all truth. And help us to stand in our position and in our identity in Christ. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.